Fan charts are a compelling way to present uncertain forecasts as they not only show a central projection, they also show a range of possible outcomes around that projection. These charts are particularly popular with the Bank of England as a means to visualise the uncertainty and risks associated with economic forecasts. They also look pretty cool. You'd think they'd be difficult to do, but they're not. Follow along with me and let's complete one in under 10 minutes. So to complete my fan chart, I'm going to be using a chart called a stacked area chart. So firstly, I've set my data up in a table. So to do that, you just need to select your data and then use Control and T. You can see I've got several columns here. So I've got my dates and I've got my actual forecast down to December 2022. And then you can see it's a forecast for the rest of 2023. I've then got my min and max columns, which I'll be populating in a few minutes. I've got my base column, which will form the bottom of my stacked area chart. And then finally, I've got my band size, which will be the forecast size for each forecast fan element. So firstly, I want to populate this helper row up the top. So in the forecast column, what I want to do is always be picking up the final forecast. So the last forecast of the year, and in this case, the one on the December the 31st. So I'm gonna use an index function, which is gonna be dynamic. Now, if you haven't used index before, I'll just link a video in the description that you can follow and you can learn a little bit more about it there. So the first argument within my index is my array. So I'm gonna select all of my forecast row. And then my second argument is just saying, well, how many rows do I want to go down? So I'm gonna use the rows function, which will just effectively specify how many rows I've got in my table. So if I select my whole range, close my parentheses on my rows function, close my parentheses on my index function, and hit return and you can see that returns my December forecast. The next cell to the right, what I want to do is I want to specify, well, what's my minimum quartile against this forecast here, this 670. So what I'm going to do is just equals my forecast in cell C3 and I'm going to multiply that by 0.97 and hit return. And then from my max quartile, I'm just going to go equals my 670 forecast and multiply that by 0.03. Now you can use whatever min and max you want. So to get a minimum value, we need to enter in quite a lengthy formula with different elements. So let's just break it down. Firstly, we're gonna take the minimum value and then just minus our forecast. Then I'm just gonna select that formula and I'm just gonna F4 to lock it into place. Then I'm just gonna wrap a set of parentheses around that and hit return. So that just gives me my minimum for the forecast against the minimum for each of the columns. Now I don't want it to be minus 20 for the actual, so I need to change the formula a little bit. So if I just select into the formula again, and this time we're going to divide that by count of all the values in the forecast column, close my parentheses and hit return. Now what I want to do is I want this a increasing amount for each of the forecasts. So you can see here on the right that what should happen as, as the forecast goes out further into the future, the minimum and when we do the maximum value should increase. So to do that and to do that dynamically, what I'm gonna do is I just need to multiply that by a dynamic range. So if I use my count function again, and then this time I'm gonna wrap it inside an index. The area that we want is the forecast column, but this time I just want the first row. So that's why I'm just selecting one just for the first row. Put in my colon and effectively I want that till basically the forecast starts here, so at the end. So what I'm gonna do is just select anywhere in the forecast column. Close my count function and hit return. And you can see that my minimum values are decreasing as my forecast goes out into the future. Now what I want to do is I just want to add in my forecast to that as well and hit return. And what you can see is that my minimum value here of 650 matches my minimum value in my helper row. Now, instead of writing that formula directly into the max column, what I can do is just control and write to that. And I can simply just change over my formula instead of being min, I can put that as max and hit return. And then that should have my maximum value at the end. My base column is effectively the bottom of my area stacked chart, and that is gonna be my actual forecast plus 
my minimum value and hit return and my band size is going to be my minimum minus my maximum and hit return to that okay now we're ready to add our chart so all we need to do is just select our date column our base column and then also our band size then we just need to go up into the ribbon into insert across here to the right just selecting our different types of charts we want to select a line chart and then down here in the bottom just one to the right is our stacked area chart so just select that and let's just move that over to the right so i can just use alt and just select just drag the chart area out to the right and that will snap it to the grid so just up and down so we get it nice and big let's just take off our chart title and then let's take these grid lines off as well now you can actually see what's happened here is you can see that for each of these days you can see the blue area and this line here is our actual and then it hits to the start of the orange line which is where our forecast starts and then our forecast you can see that the thickness of the line just gets more and more thicker as we go along and that is to basically emphasize that the forecast is becoming uncertain as we go further into the future so we just need to do a couple of steps a little bit around formatting just to finish our chart so firstly just select all of our region in blue right mouse click and then just select format data series then just go into the fill area here and we want no fill for that and down on the border we want no line as well for that so that's just taken out all of our base overall then we want to just select this area with this line here as well and then we just want to right mouse click and then we want to format data series again and we can actually fill that in with a different color line so for the moment I'm just going to put that in as black and then for the solid fill I'm just going to put that in as black as well now, at the moment this forecast line only has one fan so what we want to do is we want to add several under and over it just to represent that as the time goes on there's different quartiles to our forecast so if i select my band size and then control and copy just select anywhere within our chart region and then i'm just going to paste it in six times so one two three four five six now what we want to do is we want to select our middle forecast which is this one in blue and we're going to make this a dark kind of green so if i right mouse click there and then format data series let's just move that over to the right a little bit in the fill we want to add that in as a dark green then underneath we'll have the same kind of dark green but this time we want to change the transparency of that to about 20 percent select our next quartile down which is just this blue line here again select our dark green but this time we want to up the transparency to 40 percent and then select our final light brown color again change that to our dark green and this time we want the transparency at 60 percent so you can just change the colors on the ones up here so i'm just going to do that really quickly okay so you can see pretty much that's our fan chart so we've got our actuals up to the end of january and then you can see we've got several different forecasts and the darker the color in the middle the more probable the forecast but then you get the forecast or the outliers then which work outwards which are a lighter color which mean the uncertainty increases with those continue watching this playlist up here for more excellent types of charts and this playlist down here for 10 excellent tips on pivot tables.